Hey, welcome back to our channel. I'm coming at you today with a new video on white tea. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel and you're interested in all things tea, be sure to click that subscribe button down below as well as the notify bell so that you'll know whenever we make a new video. We cover things like tea travel, uh, how to brew tea, processing, all kinds of stuff about tea. A while back, we posted a question on Instagram and we asked you guys what you thought the most misunderstood tea was. Well, we got answers that covered just about every single tea category, but by far the most popular answer was white tea. So today, I'm going to brew up a white tea called Shomei, and we're going to dive into just why is this tea so misunderstood. It's pretty interesting how I'm actually brewing today. I'm actually going to boil this tea. And it's really quite simple. You just take your white tea, pop it into your kettle, Get it all in there. Add some cold water in. And pop it on the heat. Let me just dial in my uh, setting here. Excellent. And we're ready to rock. So we'll just let that boil and we'll dive right into white tea and its mysteries. White tea is actually the least processed of all tea. It's simply plucked, withered, and dried. So therefore, what does that mean? It means we're not encouraging oxidation, but we're not discouraging it either. So we call it a slightly oxidized tea. To see how it fits in with the other tea categories, be sure to check out the video we did on the six tea categories. It's down below in our catalog. White tea also falls into three main types of white tea. We've got Bai Hao Yin Zhen, which is entirely made of buds, which makes it super popular because there's a bud craze among tea people. So that one is also called Silver Needle. Bai Hao Yin Zhen literally means Silver Needle. Well, more or less. Another white tea is Bai Mudan sometimes called white peony, and that's made with one bud and two leaf. Finally, we've got what I'm brewing today, Shomei. It's entirely made with leaf, and it's, a less, it's maybe a lesser known white tea, but it's still a delicious sip, as I'll, uh, as I'll be witnessing very shortly. And if you're wondering what the translation is, it's longevity eyebrow, which is probably why nobody calls it that. It's a little bit weird. Well, I see that my tea's boiling. I'm gonna have to grab that off the heat here. Just bring it over, and while I'm at it, I'll pour myself a little sip. So pretty simple tea to brew and prepare. You may want to wait a little bit before you pour it out. I actually burned myself on the steam a little bit while I was pouring. But I'm okay, don't worry. Shomei, the one I'm sipping, and I'm dying to have a sip of it. Oh my gosh, that's way too hot. Let's just give that a second. So. Shomei is made from entirely leaf. So again, you've got an all bud by Hao Yin you've got a one bud, two leaf by Mudan, and you've got a Shomei. Maybe it's ready now. I'm really dying for a sip. Right? All the talking made my voice dry. If you slurp it like that, it cools it like as it goes in, you don't burn yourself. Plus, it gives a nice audio effect on your earphones. <laughs> All right, so white tea traditionally comes from two locations in Fujian province, China. I have to be careful because I almost said in Fuding, but Fuding is one of those places in Fujian province. There's a place called Fuding, white tea comes from there. There's another spot, traditionally, Zhenghe. Probably didn't say that so perfectly, but Zhenghe is another traditional place. But nowadays, there's tons of innovation in tea, Different tea types are going all over the place. White tea is getting popular. So white tea is made all over the place. Aging of white tea is becoming popular. So you can find white tea from Yuna and you can probably find white tea from all over. Um, but those are the two sort of historic and traditional locations. White tea is made from two cultivars by and large. Those are Da Bai Cha and Da Hao Cha. Hmm. Looks like I'm running a little low here. I'm just gonna shoot a bit more water in here and make myself some more tea. 
So of the two cultivars, uh, Da Bai Cha and Da Hao Cha, the most popular is Da Hao Cha. And the reason for that is because Da Hao Cha is a really nice yielding plant. So lots of yield, as well as uh, it's also very fuzzy. Oh, I went too far. Hang on, I gotta dial this in. I gotta concentrate on my burner for a second. So what do I mean fuzzy? It's got tons of trichomes on the buds and those are really important because they enhance the appearance of white tea, which is an important criteria for judgment, and they enhance the flavor. White tea is harvested, like many other teas, mainly in the spring, but it's not restricted to spring. It can be harvested in summer and autumn as well. And it has a traditional sort of concept as a medicinal tea. So there's some really important dates that it could be harvested on too, spe specific days, uh, like uh, Gu Yu, I think it's called, and uh, Bai Lu. Uh, bai Lu. So those are also important factors in harvest. Whoop, we're boiling again here. Let me turn off the hot plate and bring that over here. I'm pretty good for now, but and last time I got a little steam burn, so I'm gonna wait and fill that up in a minute. But it's nice to see that we can just reboil that and get more tea. It's neat. Aged tea, the aroma tends to be a little bit more uh, subdued. Whereas on a fresh white tea, I'm going to get some sort of spring, like a fresh, I don't want to say fruitiness, but I'll get sweetness. This one, I get a bit of earthiness. Oh, and you might be wondering, hey, I'm boiling the tea. Is that bitter? Not at all. This is a really nice chaumet. Uh, that would be a good question, but no. When you boil this tea, it's not bitter at all. It's smooth. Mm. Oh, it's just wonderful. We touched on this one a little bit earlier when I talked about Bai Hao Yin Zhen being made with all buds and Bai Mudan being one bud and two leaf. But because Bai Hao Yin Zhen is all buds, doesn't mean it's better than Bai Hao Yin Zhen. For example, you could have a Bai Hao Yin Zhen that's a late spring or maybe even summer harvest and a very early harvest Bai Mudan. That Bai Mudan is going to be a better tea than the Bai Hao Yin Zhen. All those mean are the plucking standard. Bai Hao Yin Zhen, all bud. Bai Mudan, one bud, two leaf. Simple. Another one that's easy to address today because I'm actually boiling the Shomei is that like any great Chinese tea, White tea is not afraid of boiling water. A very good quality white tea actually needs boiling water to bring out the rich flavor and mouthfeel. Even though it's full of tender buds and delicate leaves, it will not bring out astringency or bitterness. No worries. And finally, the biggest misconception about white tea is that because it's a simple process, it's easy to make. I was in Tai Mushan just this spring and I got to witness firsthand just how difficult and the amount of precision it requires to make a great sip of white tea. Simple process, right? Pluck, wither, dry. But after it's pluck, how long do we wither it? How do we wither it and where? The temperature is different from day to day. All of these things come into play. Not only that, how they handle the tea between the steps is incredibly precise and delicate. It takes a lot of work to make a great sip of white tea. So here's a little tip on what the ideal, absolutely perfect, what everybody is striving for, perfect white tea should look and taste like. The liquor color should be clear like spring water, almost completely transparent, except for it's radiant with little fuzzies floating around inside. That's perfect. Next, the sip should be full and rich. That means sweet, fruity, and big mouthfeel. That's how you know you're dealing with the, you know, the ideal, the top standard of white tea. So if you're sipping a white tea from this year and it has a liquor color, something like my aged Chaumet, it gives you something to gauge by. White tea is another tea category that ages particularly well. The flavors are going to transform from sweet and fruity to more of a plum, date, woody, nice mouthfeel and a good linger. It's really fun to do. Now, if you don't have the patience for that, there's a link down below to this aged Chaumet 
But if you want to give it a try, it's really quite easy. You just need patience, seal up your tea, tuck it away in a cool, dry, dark place, the back of a cupboard or your pantry, and don't forget about it. That's the tricky part too. Pull it out every now and then, maybe every six months to a year and see how it's transforming. You can age it for a very long time and it will just get more and more interesting. Today I share with you how to best enjoy aged Chaumet by boiling it and some of the reasons why I think white tea is the most misunderstood tea category. If you have other misunderstandings that you'd like to share about white tea or any other tea category, please leave us a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. Finally, if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you'll get notified as soon as we publish our next video. Until next time, keep steeping!